Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work on finding the limit of trigonometric functions using this really handy property. This is uh, the fact that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to 1. Now, sometimes we'll have to do a lot of manipulating to work that in, uh, but you'll see that it does show up quite a bit. Now, another thing that uh, I, I want to note before we jump into a lot of these examples is sometimes you'll see this flipped over with the x on the top and the sine of x on the bottom. Even in this instance, the limit is still equal to 1. So watch for both of those pieces to show up, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these examples and see how we can put this to use. So in this first one, we want to figure out what is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over x. Now, this doesn't quite fit what we're looking for. We really like it if what's inside the value of sine, say this is our angle, matches what's on the bottom. And what we're getting here is that we have a 5, but we don't have a 5 on the bottom. Well, in order to manipulate this and make it match what we need it to, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. All right. Now, in doing so, I'll get that 5x in the top and in the bottom like I need. But you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, what do we do with this extra 5? Well, remember that when we're dealing with limits and I have a constant multiplied by a function, it is completely okay to move those uh, outside of the function. So we're going to leave this 5 on the bottom, but the other 5 we're going to go ahead and move all the way out front. So now I have 5 times uh, the limit of sine of 5x all over 5x. And now we actually have it matching the form where you know both the argument inside of sine and the, the part on the bottom are the same. They're both approaching 0. So I can say that this entire limit is equal to 1. So 5 times 1. Now I'll go ahead and finish that off. And now I have the value of my limit. Looks like this one's equal to just 5. Now in my next example, we'll see a very similar situation. Only this time, uh, the argument definitely does not match what's on the bottom. Uh, but the bottom already has a number. Okay, so again, we want to think of maybe multiplying the top and bottom by something to get us that 11 on the bottom. All right, for this one, uh, we're going to borrow an 11. So do that on the top and do that on the bottom. Now in this instance, we end up with a couple of numbers that we simply do not need anymore. So I have the 11x in the top, I want the 11x in the bottom, but we'll go ahead and move out the 3 and we'll also move out that 11. So watch where I put those two. So this is equal to 11 thirds, so I'm moving out that 11, moving out that 3. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 11x all over 11x, because this 11 is still on the bottom. Okay, now it matches what I need. So this is 11 thirds times 1. And I can see that the value of the entire limit is simply 11 thirds. All right, now sometimes you have to be a little bit more crafty with how you manipulate this thing. And sometimes you'll have to use your uh, definitions for trigonometric functions and swap things out entirely. And that's what we're going to do with this one. So I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of 5x over x. And unfortunately, my property only works for, say, sine. So what do I do? Well, I can borrow the fact that uh, tangent of an angle is equal to sine over cosine. So let's go ahead and rewrite this limit using that. So the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, on the top of this fraction, I'll write this as sine of 5x all over cosine of 5x. All right, so you can actually see that there's where the sine is coming into place. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more of the rewriting process. So let's see, everything is being divided by the x. We can write this as sine of 5x all over x cosine of 5x. Okay, now at this point, I want to point something out. We want to get something like sine of 5x over a 5x. I'm pretty close. At least I have an x in the bottom. 
I also have a cosine of 5x in the bottom. And it seems like that might be a problem as well, but it actually is not. The reason why I'm not worried about the cosine of 5x is because as x approaches 0 for this, then the value of cosine of 5x is just approaching 1. So that's not necessarily undefined, but I am worried about the x and I am worried about the sine of 5x. Let's see, let's get a 5 in the bottom. At least let's take care of that by multiplying the top and bottom by 5. And let's rewrite this out. So let's see, I don't need this top 5 inside my limit, so let's kick that out. So I have the sine 5x all over 5x. I'm just going to write the other cosine separately. So I can point out what each of these uh, is doing, okay? Let's keep track of this. This 5 is staying in the bottom, this 5 is moving out front, and now we can actually go through and start computing the limits. Okay, so 5, just a 5. The limit of this is 1, and the limit of this is also 1. But I don't have to use any special properties or rules to take care of this guy, because again, as x approaches 0, the cosine value is approaching uh, 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. So all of this goes to just 5. All right. Let's again use some other uh, trigonometric identities and see if we can swap these out and get some better uh, functions. Uh, so this is the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the cosecant of 9x all over cosine of 12x. Oh, man, a lot going on here. Let's see what we can do about that cosecant. So cosecant of an angle is equal to 1 over sine of that angle. So it looks like we can write this one as the limit as x approaches 0 of x times 1 over sine of 9x. And all of that is being divided by cosine of 12x. Hmm. So up the top here, we're getting something close to what we need. Uh, it's missing a 9 though, so we'll have to at least uh, work that in somehow. And we can do that by multiplying the top and the bottom of our large fraction by 9. Okay, so let's rewrite this. Uh, we want the 9x on top. This 9 on the bottom, we'll go ahead and move that out. So there's still a 9 on the bottom. So I have 9x all over sine of 9x. And let's see, this cosine part, cosine of 12x. All right, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, now again, let's go ahead and move through this and compute those limits. So this 1 9th is still sitting out front, just as it is. This fits um, what we need. We have the argument as the same as the other side, and x is approaching 0, so that is just 1. And then as x approaches 0 for our cosine, that's 1 over 1, or 1. So all of this reduces to simply 1 ninth. And then that limit is done. All right, let's do one last one. Let's try and make this look really complicated. So now we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of 4x plus 4x cosine 4x uh, all over sine of 4x cosine of 4x. Okay, so a lot of things are going on in here. We're worried about the sine of 4x in the bottom because, of course, we can't divide by 0. No direct substitution here. Uh, and I can't necessarily just pair up this guy with this guy and this one with the other cosine because things are connected using plus. So to get uh, started on this one, we will go ahead and do some factoring in the top. Okay, so that has a 4x, that has a 4x. Let's factor it out of both of those pieces. So 1 plus the cosine of 4x all over the sine of 4x and the cosine of 4x. Okay, now look out front right here. There's that sine of 4x and there's that 4x. We can group those pieces together, and we'll go ahead and group our, our cosines together as well. This will just make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So 4x all over sine of 4x 
1 plus cosine of 4x all over cosine of 4x. Okay, now we can take the limit of each of these pieces. Okay, starting with this one, we know that the limit of that is 1. And then coming over to here, we don't have any special properties to work on that, but we don't need them because as x approaches 0, this cosine will be 1, and this cosine will also be 1. So we'll have 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 all over 1. All right, now I think we can uh, really get reducing this. So this is 1 multiplied by 2 over 1, or simply 2 is our limit. So as you can see, you got to do a little bit of work uh, of manipulating the function, trying to get, uh, say, something like sine of your angle over that angle. Uh, but once you do, uh, usually you're in pretty good shape. If you'd like to see some more math videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.